Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 13 Developer Beta 4. This came in at 699.2 megabytes on my iPhone XS Max, and it came in similar size on all of these different devices. Now, if you're waiting for the public beta, expect that either later today, by the time you're watching this, or later in the week. Now let's take a look at the build number. The build number is 17A5534F, and the reason I share that is to let you know if the public beta is the same once it comes out with the same build number, and also for those of you that actually are listening to this that are vision impaired so that you'll know what version you're on. So hopefully that helps you out as well. Now with this particular beta, Apple says in the notes, there are 50 known issues still remaining. So there's still a lot of bugs to be fixed and this final version will come out in September. So they do have a little ways to get everything right and buttoned down. However, there are 63 resolved issues and that's higher than the known issues. So we're starting to flip that where we have more resolved issues than known issues. And that's a good sign. And so far using this, I can tell you that it definitely feels like they've fixed a lot. And I have had less bugs in the past few hours using this as compared to the previous beta, which is really nice. Now, the first thing they fixed that you can't see has to do with a security vulnerability that actually allowed unauthenticated access to passwords in settings. So they've fixed that vulnerability that we knew about. And thankfully that's gone. Now, one of the major things they've changed is 3d touch. Now 3d touch is still there, but it doesn't react as though it's pressure sensitive. So if I 3d touch on say Instagram, the menu actually looks a little different this time around. So if I 3d touch again, it just pops up. It feels like haptic touch only. It feels correct this time. It feels like 3d touch. You also have a new button to rearrange apps so you can rearrange apps. They'll jiggle or you can 3d touch, keep holding in the same spot. And then it goes and jiggles again. It just takes a little bit longer so I can do that on any of these apps. So if I just keep holding my finger here, it shrinks back down and then jiggles again and you can delete it or move it around. So you have that option. They've also changed this on the iPad. Let me show you that. Now on the iPad, the icons do the same thing. You don't feel the haptic feedback, but the actual menus are smaller when you 3d press on something or haptic press. So again, go to settings and do the same thing and you have a new menu. So that's really nice and nothing has changed too much here, but we'll talk more about some bug fixes in a moment. Now, as far as 3d press on a device like the six S plus those that were worried that the 3d press to switch between apps was gone. Well, it's not, it's still there. So again, 3d press the edge and it's still there. So that features there, but it's not pressure sensitive. When I 3d touch on say weather, it's got a new menu. It looks different. You can rearrange the icons and it's a little bit different. Now on haptic touch devices, if I haptic touch on settings, for example, you get the same pop-up. It just doesn't respond as fast. So you get the same sort of jiggle to it, but it's not as fast. And there's a little bit of a difference. The same thing is true when you 3d press or haptic touch in the menu. It feels very similar now between the devices, but it's a little different in the menu. So if we go into the menu and then you go under accessibility and touch, and then haptic touch, you'll see it says fast and slow and then touch duration test, similar to the 3d touch test we had before. But if we go under settings for a 3d touch device, it now says 3d and haptic touch, and it's a little bit different as well. So it's got both combined. You've got the same thing. This is basically the same as far as the way you press on it. So I'm not sure they're continually going to use the pressure sensitivity in their new displays on the next iPhones. They'll probably have a haptic touch feedback feel to it. Now, another new thing that Apple showcased this week, but not in iOS 13 is new emoji. And they showed this on their newsroom site and you can see there's new emoji for the new Unicode standard. And there's a Unicode board that, or consortium that decides which emoji there will be. So there's new emoji coming out when iOS 13 is released. So we should have all of those new ones as well. Now, aside from that, the only other thing I could find in news that was actually completely new is as far as features is audio sharing is now compatible with the first generation AirPods and power beats pro. So iPhone eight and later should have all of that. That's in the new features. Now there are a couple minor changes here and there. So let's go into messages. If I create a new message, you'll see the new icon here for voice voice to text. So 
it's not much different, but it does seem to keep up a little bit better. And this is still a little bit choppy down here with the little animations when I'm speaking, but overall the voice dictation seems to be working really, really well. Now, if we take a look at the iPhone SE here, and maybe we want to go into a photo and then we'll go to the wallpaper that I have here and we share that. We'll hit the little share button. The animation's a little bit different now. So if I push the share button, you'll see the photos animation is different. And then also the share sheet, these little icons are white now instead of a gray. So before they were a little bit white and now it's slightly translucent and it's kind of hard to see that it's very, very close to being not transparent, but right now it's got a little bit of translucency to it. So it's kind of nice, just a, a small little change they've made. And then also if you go back into photos on say my iPhone 10 S max now also in photos, there's a new little icon here that tells you how many different photos were left out from the actual curated photos that you're seeing here. So what I mean by that is if I tap on this, you'll see here, for some reason it didn't respond very well, but there's a lot of different photos. When I take photos for thumbnails and my videos, there's a lot of them that shows you how many it didn't use. So that's something that's a little bit new and that's really it. As far as features now, touch responsiveness seems so much better in this particular beta on all of the different devices. It's just much, much faster, fluid and fast in everything I've done. I haven't had any issues so far. Now, of course, it's only been a couple hours since I've been using this, but everything is just so much faster. And I think that's really what they've buttoned back buttoned down. And then also there's a couple bugs they've fixed. Private browsing is back. So if you 3d press on Safari, you can go to new private tab here, or if we cancel that, we can hit our tabs here and the private button is back. So that's back, which is really nice. And then also people are saying that Chromecast is working again. So that's a nice thing to see. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, battery life on the previous beta on beta three was okay for me, but as you can see here, battery health is at hundred percent. And as I said before, I only show you that so that, you know, it's the best possible scenario. And with my current usage day to day, I'm getting about five to six and a half hours of screen on time with about 20 to 30% of my battery life left at the end of the day. And it's pretty good. My screen on time is five hours and six minutes screen off four hours and 31 minutes. It varies depending on the day, but overall I'm on Wi-Fi most of the time and using mostly social media apps. So it does pretty well overall. Now, for those of you interested in the Geekbench scores, let's take a look at that. Now the Geekbench scores were pretty good, very similar to what we had before. And I've laid all these devices out so you can take a look and reference them yourself, but uh, this doesn't matter as much until we get closer to the final release. And on the far left, I have the iPad pro 12.9 third generation, then the iPhone SE, then the iPhone 6s plus the iPhone 10 R and then the iPhone 10 S max. And on the 10 S max, we have a single core score of 4,798 and a multi-core score of 11,254. If we compare that to what we had before, you'll see that the scores are pretty good compared to before a little bit better as far as multi-core, a little bit worse as far as single core, depending on which variant we're talking about. So depending on which variant of the OS we're talking about. So overall it's pretty good. Now there may be some other small tweaks and changes throughout with fonts and different sizes and things, but for the most part, that's it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. One thing I did notice is some of the spacing seems different, not just in settings, but maybe in weather. It just seems a little bit different throughout, but let me know what you found in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.